from the longest two races of the season to the shortest. It's time for IMSA to head to Long Beach for a 100 minute sprint around the streets of California. With the loss of Detroit, Long Beach is now the only street circuit on the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship schedule, as well as the only time that IMSA shares a bill with IndyCar this year and the only 100 minute race. Despite only GTP, GTD Pro and GTD taking part, a strong 28 car field has been put together for the first sprint race of the season. During the DPI era, Cadillac were the manufacturer to beat here, taking four wins in five races and locking out the podium last year. After a strong run at Daytona, if IMSA ran under WEC rules, there's an argument the 01 would have won, was followed up by dominance before disaster at Sebring. The defending winners of Sebastian Bourdais and Renga van der Zander likely arrive as the early favourites to take the victory this weekend for Chip Ganassi. Seabass especially was sensational around here last year. The other Cadillac, the 31 of Pipo Durrani and Alexander Sims, holds a narrow championship lead after winning at Sebring just 10 points ahead of the Konica Minolta Acura of Felipe Albuquerque and Ricky Taylor. But a close points race means that any of six cars could leave Long Beach as the championship leader, somehow including the number 6 Porsche, which is yet to finish a race this season. GTP has an 8 car grid, the same as Sebring, with this set to be the final race before the arrival of the first customer Porsche 963 for JDC Miller Motorsports, in time for round four at Laguna Seca. As always at Long Beach, the key to the race is going to be traffic, with it near impossible to get past GT cars throughout the opening sector, making it very easy for gaps to grow and shrink wildly based on where you catch slower cars. With overtaking difficult, in-laps and outlaps tend to be crucial around here, although this year should be less of a strategy race than in the past, with the GTP's larger fuel tank making it much easier for them to one-stop than the DPI's had it. But some cautions could well throw the cat amongst the pigeons on this front, and we could easily see some gambles on exactly how long their allowance of stint energy can be stretched. In GTD Pro, the defending winners are Heart of Racing Team and Ross Gunn and Alex Rebrus, who currently sit bottom of the pile in the championship of the five-car full-season entries, after misfortune at both Daytona and Sebring. It's WeatherTech Racing currently on top, with Mauro Engel and Daniel Yonkadea 20 points clear of Vassar Sullivan's Joe of Ben Barnacote and Jack Hawksworth, with both cars yet to finish off the podium so far this season. Corvette Racing have been the masters of Long Beach in the past, with 8 wins in total and a podium every year since 2014, making them a surefire contender this weekend. I expect them to be fired up after feeling hard done by in the contact fest at the end of Sebring, especially as not winning would mean the first time without a victory in the opening three races since 2011. GTD is by far the largest class this weekend, making up over half the field with 15 entries. Paul Miller Racing took the BMW M4 GT3's maiden IMSA win here last year, and the BMW is the form car, after Paul Miller Racing led home Turner Motorsport in a Beamer 1-2 at Sebring. Inception Racing currently hold the lead in the championship with their McLaren, where they will face a difficult job holding on to the top spot, with Paul Miller Racing just one point back, and running a bronze being a much bigger disadvantage in the sprint races than in the Enduros, even if Brendan Areeb is among the stronger bronze drivers out there. A sprint race will also be our first chance to see how some of IMSA's changes to incentivise Bron drivers work, with them allowed a fresh set of Michelins without losing grid position if they qualify the car, and also a lowered minimum drive time, just 35 minutes. An increased bronze grid for the full season, not that it could get much lower than the one we had last year, seems like the first sign these might be working. We also have a couple of changes to the planned entry in GTD. With the Racers Edge Motorsport Acura that was only set to do the Michelin Endurance Cup taking part in some of this year's sprint races, including Long Beach, but the Chetelar Racing Ferrari that had planned to do a full season is absent. Long Beach is only a two day weekend, 
the only time GTP teams have to deal with this format, which leads to a compressed day of running on Friday with two free practice sessions and qualifying. Any accident in practice could easily have huge knock-on effects for the rest of the weekend, with such little time to repair the car, and grid position so crucial around this short street circuit. As per usual, qualifying in the race will be broadcast, with qualifying at 5.15 local on Friday, and the race at 2pm local on Saturday the 15th of April. So good luck to any Europeans planning on staying up through the night to catch Quali live. The good news for those hoping to avoid chaos is that the forecast looks clear, with sunny weather expected. IMSA's motto may have gone from watch the bumps to watch the walls, but you can certainly expect another aggressive race in the Acura Grand Prix of Long Beach. Who do you think is going to take the win? Please let me know in the comments. And whilst you're down there, why not press that like button and consider subscribing? All really help me out.